I'm Rob Carlin, I am the Managing Director of Superior Wellness. Our core business is manufacturing hot tubs, however recently we've moved into the manufacturing and distribution of ice tubs. So I've always been interested in fitness, health, well-being. So as a Managing Director it's important that I perform both physically and mentally to the best of my ability. So what I'm wanting to achieve from this study is I wanting to improve my mental alertness, my sleep, but also performance as well, so my recovery, etc. So from a few days from now, I'm gonna be heading down to Birmingham and visiting Dr. Imran Khan from Transform Now. He's one of the leading specialists in blood test, physical performance. He works with a lot of professionals in terms of high level athletes, high level business people. I'm going to be having a number of tests completed. I'm going to have my blood tests done, test my lung capacity. We're going to do the study for 30 days. And then after this time, I'm going to go back down to his clinic in Birmingham. We're going to repeat the test again. And then after the 30 days, we'll compare the results to see if there has been any physical changes to my body. Uh, my name is uh, Imran Khan, the director of Transform Now. So we're a company which looks at performance, health, wellness, um, from blood testing to DNA to diagnostics to anti-aging. Uh, we have a whole team of doctors and consultants with us, so we're working for the uh, like a complete holistic approach. So we've been asked by Rob from Chill Tubs to do a, a small study looking at inflammatory markers, DNA markers, epigenetic markers over the a period of a month to see if there's been any physiological changes and physical changes uh, by using a, a Chill Tub daily. In total, there's several hundred markers from the epigenetics side and the blood marker, the ESR, CRP, interleukin 6, RF factor and cortisol factors. So this will give us a, a, a good indication of what the results are prior to the month, at the start of the study, and what they're at the end of the study. Now, noted it's only a month, so there won't be some huge changes, but there will be some indicators and some changes. As you may know, the DNA doesn't change, the epigenetic markers do change. So that will tell us basically on how the inflammatory markers, which there's hundreds of them, they, you know, these are the most common ones from the blood, but there's hundreds of them ones, and the anti-aging ones and the wellness markers on how they've changed within a month. Day two today is just before 5.30 a.m. I'm in the showroom at the moment, so I'm going to jump on in. Whew. That is cold. Last few days I've not really been looking forward to getting in. I woke up a little bit earlier today, not on purpose, um, just coincidence. I actually been looking forward to getting in a little, little bit. So let's see, start the timer. Okay, day five, going in. Today's day six. I've reduced the temperature down to six degrees for the first time today. And I'm gonna do two minutes. Just completed the first seven days of the 30 day chill tub study. I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I'm training first thing in the morning and I'm using the chill tub probably 30 minutes before I train. There's a noticeable difference in my energy levels, both in the morning before training, throughout the training session, and then throughout the day. So the dopamine levels, I'm seeing are definitely rising throughout the day. My mood, I feel, I feel a lot happier actually. Um, so yeah, I've been feeling good this last week. It is getting easier as the time goes on. Um, so each day progressively, it's getting easier and easier. The first seven days, I did two minutes a day at nine degrees. I then dropped it down to six degrees for two minutes. And then throughout the study, I'll lower that temperature and potentially do even longer in the ice tub as well. Looking forward to the, the remaining time in the study. Um, like I say, I'm feeling the benefits already. I do monitor a lot of my performance. I've got, got a whoop, so sleep, recovery, etc. So statistically, my recovery is better 
over this seven days than it has been the previous seven days. Sleep is pretty much the same, um, but I sleep pretty good anyway. I don't plan on really changing anything this week, keep doing what I'm doing. Um, after 10 days, I'll probably be lowering the temperature again. So we'll just keep reviewing it, evaluating and going from there. Day eight, nothing to say today other than give me that dopamine rush. Good morning, day 11. Little secret tip I wanna give. I like to warm myself up a little bit. So I call this bird piece for breakfast. So every morning, I've been doing 10 burpees before I actually get into that ice. We'll finish a little bit early for the sake of the video. But 10 burpees, my heart rate elevates a little bit. I like to bring it back down a little bit before I get in, so. I take some deep breaths, get my breathing under control. Then I get in. Still six degrees. Good morning, everyone. According to my friend Marcus, I'm on day Sunday of my study. <laughs> I think that's day 12. Woo! Okay, so day 15 today. Feeling really, really good. There's a few things that I'm doing differently. So I've dropped this temperature to four degrees. I was on six degrees for three minutes. So uh, first day today at four, feeling good. It was hard to get into initially. There was a shock there. Um, I started acclimatizing really well. Breathing was good. Um, did two minutes at that. I'll do a few more days at four degrees for two minutes and then I'll look to last a little bit longer. Energy level's really good. So first thing in the morning, I'm getting up, I'm getting into the chill tub, having a really, really good workout. Um, other things that's slightly different or I'm noticing improvement on is the circulation. So originally I was really struggling with my circulation. I would go in and my fingers would be white for at least half an hour, an hour afterwards. I've dropped the temperature today, as I mentioned earlier, and things are looking pretty good right now. Um, I've suffered with poor circulation in the fingers and toes for a lot of years, and I'm hoping using the chill tub daily, my body's adapting. So, pretty good, and overall it's getting, getting easier. So, on to the next 14, 15 days. Day 16, dropped it down to four degrees, so. Very, very cold. I managed two minutes yesterday. Let's go. One thing I've not spoke about yet is something that they call the drop, which is basically, once you get out, um, all the blood's currently in the organs to keep you alive. But once you get out, all the blood rushes to the skin um, and then that blood recirculates back to the organs. So what happens is you get out the chill tub, um, your body starts to, to circulate blood again, but then that blood goes back to the organs, so you get a delayed kind of shiver. Um, so I'm really cold now, because that blood's gone back to the skin, cooled back down, and then gone back to my organs. So I've been out for about a minute or so now, and I'm starting to feel really cold again. Day 18 today, not very well prepared. Shorts are still soaking wet and cold from yesterday. My towel's wet, so I have this small microfiber cloth to get dry today before the gym. Um, four degrees, and I'm gonna do three minutes today. Day 19, just finished jujitsu, doing weight training this morning, so I'm pretty tired, feel achy, so I need this to recover. Okay, so just finished my third week. Um, so what I've done differently this week is I've again dropped the temperature of the chill tub. So I've dropped it down to four degrees and I've been doing three minutes. And over the last couple of days, what I've done differently is I've maintained the temperature at four degrees. However, I've been doing a lot longer in the chill tub. So today I've just done five minutes for the first time, which was hard. Um, for the remainder of next week, so I've got just over a week left, I'll be seeing how long I can stay in there. So each day I'm hoping to just keep improving a little bit more forcing my body to, to adapt. Um, I think it's good for, for mental health. So certainly from, from my point of view, 
the mental resilience that you can build by staying in there is, is something I'm really interested in. Hence the reason I'm wanting to keep pushing my body further and further. And part of that is the mental side. For other people, it may be reduced anxiety, reduced stress. There's a lot of benefits, um, both physical and mental. Day 26, heads going in. Oh, <laughs> That's cold. Day 27, just been boxing, so jumping in the chill tub to recover. Day 29 today. So what I found is if I've had a bad sleep, and then I use the chill tub, then um, I feel a little bit less tired. So obviously the dopamine levels rise, um, elevated mood, and it seems to help me throughout the day. Whereas I noticed prior to using the chill tub, if I'd had a bad sleep, I could feel the effects a lot for that day. So I'd say that using a chill tub definitely improves mood, um, performance levels, concentration. So like I say, bad sleep last night. So I'm gonna jump in here Increase those dopamine levels. Okay, so day 30 today, last day of the study. Um, I'm going back to the original conditions that I started in. So we're gonna go nine degrees for two minutes. So just to basically give the benefits that I've received over the last 30 days. So uh, I've noticed improved energy levels, uh, improved mood, I feel more alert, concentration levels are higher, um, my recovery seems to have improved, performance in training seems to have improved, statistically my body fat has reduced, um, I feel probably more resilient and mentally stronger as well. Um, we'll find out very shortly if the circulation has improved in my hands. Um, what I'll do is to continue after this 30 days is I'll still be using the chill tub regular, so I'm, I'm bringing it into my training regime, recovery, etc. Um, I think there's a lot of benefits for a lot of people, not just from a performance point of view. There's obviously you've got reduced stress, reduced anxiety. So there's a lot of benefits for, for everyone really. So after I've been in the chill tub today, I'm off down to Birmingham to get my second lot of blood tests done. Um, later on today, I'm actually going to Bali and I'm joining a gym over there. There's ice tubs there, so I'll be uh, using the ice tub on a daily basis as well when I get over to Bali. So if you look at my fingers, they're a lot different to the photo that I shared on day one. So I would say that my circulation has improved on my hands. So my hands have adapted to me using the cold on a regular basis for 30 days. So positive benefits. Hi everybody, it's uh, Imran again. So it's been exactly a month since we uh, tested Rob, so we've done the same test all over again, ESR, CRP, interleukin 6, uh, RF factor, cortisol, and we'll be doing another epigenetic check to see how the markers have changed. Um, and then when we get the results back, we'll be doing a Zoom call, uh, because Rob's going to Bali today, and we'll be doing a Zoom call and comparing both of the, uh, both of the, the markers, and how, if they won't, number one, if there's been any changes, Number two, has there been any fundamental changes? Uh, number three, has it been, you know, no response whatsoever? Um, so we, there's several hundred markers we're looking at on the epigenetics. So we get a very, very good, good indication in a relatively short time if there's been any positive benefits or not. Um, and the whole objective of the study was to see if there's any benefits or not. Um, so we'll get a completely unbiased view from DNA and, epi and DNA and epigenetics don't lie. Hey Rob, how are you mate? How was I'm your holiday? I'm good, my friend. Yourself? I'm good, thank you. How was your holiday? Yeah, good mate, good. I uh, I understand you've got the results back. Yes, we've got the results back now. So we've got, we, we can do a comparison. They were done a month apart, exactly a month apart, exactly at the same time as well. So uh, 
from our perspective, that's as accurate as we could do it. So when we did the the first result, we were looking at, at certain markers, which were inflammatory markers. Um, there was the rheumatoid factor, interleukin-6, as well as CRP, um, your hormones, liver, kidneys, etc. Now, taking into account you're young, you train, you're healthy, you eat well. So a lot of your markers were very good, but we did have your uh, cortisol level was higher um, the the first time round. Your CRP was quite high, uh, as in um, nine point zero six, and your RA factor um, and interleukin factor uh, they were sort of mid range. Now, what's interesting is um, on the second test we've done uh, one month later, uh, your CRP has dropped quite considerably. It's dropped your uh, rheumatoid factor has dropped and your interleukin factor has uh, considerably dropped. So it may, may be one point on paper, but that's quite an exponential uh, drop. And interestingly, your testosterone has uh, gone up uh, by two points and your free testosterone has gone up. So if we were to just assess it on your before and after, it's been quite official to... Um, okay. Now, obviously, as an experiment, one person is, isn't enough. Uh, you'd have to do a wide spectrum of people, different ages, different fitness levels, different fat levels, age groups, ethnicity, to get a much more accurate result. But based upon your individual details, it's been extremely beneficial to you. We also did um, the epigenetics test and the DNA test. And I'm happy to report, which you've got like 180 pages, I think, but I'm you know, I'm very pleased for that your genetic age compared to your biological age, you're 2.5 years younger than you are, which is very so. Which is which is very good. So, if you carry on this way, by the time you're 50, you'll be six years old. So, <laughs> hopefully, I'd be like Benjamin Button. Yeah, but the the actual thing is, is that on the your inflammation markers were excellent. Um, in in some aspects um for example your genetic age was 2.6 uh two years six months and less than you are your um your cognitive ability your memory uh and your inflammatory markers were, were a lot better so when we include the epigenetics and obviously the ones we did for you are more advanced than normal epigenetics the the when you include the epigenetic aspect of it as well as the the blood aspect of it quite clearly it's been beneficial for you i mean yeah. quite clearly it has it's it's fairly um it can't really be questioned because of of the uh of the results we've had now that also has to be taken into account like i said lifestyle as well so as in an aspect of of the cold therapy um, and your diet and your general training, when you combine all of them together, it's been extremely beneficial for you. And the fact that you're two and a half years uh, clinically younger than your biological age, that, that can only be a good thing. That That's not a bad thing at all. So, you know, in all in all, it's, it's, it's pr pr you know, fairly good. So my, my inflammation is reduced, my cortisol levels are reduced. What kind of percentage reduction is that in run? 20%. Okay. And then obviously, the testosterone levels have increased as well. As a percentage, what would you say that is? Around about sixteen percent. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. So we're not, you know, we're not going to make any outlandish claims. Eight hundred percent increase or these sort of things. That, yeah. that, that actually, it's about sixteen percent increase. Now, the the difference, for example, in some people, not particularly in your case, the difference between if somebody was lower, your levels were fairly good. If they were, if they were lower. That 16% increase is the difference between them having clinical TRT or not having it. Yeah. So, you know, 16% is significant. Um, uh, and it's, you know, things like retaining muscle, exercise, a wellness, wellness factor. So, you know, if uh, ideally maybe we do this again in six months' time, you, you know, you could put a lot more factors in there. And, and start looking at the mental wellness side of it as well, uh, as well as the, perform the performance side of it. So there are, you know, we could do certain surveys, uh, check things out, certain, certain additional markers, um, and, and look at the more complete thing. So it becomes a, 
a very individual case study for you. So yeah. as a case study, it's it's fine. It's, it's worked well for you. I mean, it, it works for you. Amazing. Thank you. Okay. Um, now the other the other things, just minor things. For example, your vitamin levels were were good anyway, so they're fine. Um, the your your cholesterol was perfect. Uh, your whole lipid profile was perfect. That's fine. Your kidney function was perfect. That that's still just as good. Your liver function was perfect. That's good. Your iron levels were good. So all in all, from a, a health perspective, we would conclude that in your case study, we've had roughly a 20% drop in, in, in inflammatory markers. We've had um, about a 16% increase in testosterone. Uh, you have a biological age of two years uh, less than you are. Um, so all in all, hunky dory is great. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, mate. Yeah, keep it touch.